The news headline Niger Delta should run away from Biafra. They are more evil than Boko Haram. Ognini Elder says. You are welcome to the news. Please listen to the details carefully. The elders of the Ogini Kingdom that experienced the civil war and shared their grief from all that happened. Them ad- advising, pardon, their grief from all that happened are advising the Niger Delta youths not to take Biafra as their ally. Those who arrested and sentenced Isaac Adakaburu to death for declaring the Niger Delta Republic, Renéda Awisa Fulanis no Yorubais. But two supposed brothers of his and Biafrans, named Odumegu Ojuku and Aguiyi Enosi, we were still on the side of Gambaris and still trying to please them as at then. For declaring Niger Delta Republic, Enosi, the then military head of state, ordered Ojuku to get Isaac Boru arrested for treason. Ojuku, in an attempt to please Gambaris, fought Isaac Boru for 12 days, within which he used federal might of one Nigeria to kill 150 soldiers loyal to Isaac Boru, cut Isaac Boru, striped him naked, and sent him over to Lagos where Iwansi charged him to court and within just two months got him convicted at the Supreme Court of a treasonable felony of trying to break away from Azikwe's one Nigeria, got him sentenced to death by hanging. While Iwansi and Ujuku did all that to Isaac Boru, they left untouched their Igbo brother soldiers who planned a coup with which they killed innocent houses, Yorubas, Niger Deltans, Middle Belters, leaving Igbo politicians unarmed, despite they, like Zig and Opara, were part and parcel of the corrupt Balewa government. However, before Ojuku and Iwansi could execute their sentence on Isaac Bo, God intervened and the counter cop happened. Iwansi was overthrown and killed. Gowon took over, declared Isaac Boro innocent, and released him. But just 15 months later, Ojukutu declared the Biafra Republic due to the way Igbos were being killed in the north. In declaring Biafra, rather than f- first apologize to Isaac Boro for what he earlier did to him, and then asked and then asked for his cooperation in fighting to realize the Biafra dream. Ojuku did nothing like that, but without consulting Boru at all, went as far as arrogantly including in his Biafra map the very Niger Delta areas, which Isaac Boru earlier tried to pull out of Nigeria, and which he, Ojuku, nearly killed him for. This angered Isaac Boru and Ken Zarowiwa, who both pledged support for Gowon to teach Ojuku a bitter lesson for his arrogance and dishonesty. That was why Isaac Boru and Zarowiwa fought on the side of Gowon during the war. Naturally, Isaac Boru could not have come out of prison to join the Ojuku who jailed him and fight against the Gowon who released him. It would have been absolved. No rational human being does that. Now let us look at remembering Nigerians' Biafra war that many prefer to forget. The death of more than a million people in Nigeria as a result of the brutal civil war, which ended exactly 50 years ago, a scar on the nation's history. For most Nigerians, the war over the break away state of Biafra is generally regarded as an unfortunate episode, best forgotten. But for the Igbo people who fought for cessation, it remains a life defining event. In 1967, following two coups, coups and turmoil, 
which led to about a million Igbos returning to the southeast of Nigeria. The Republic of Biafra succeeded with 33-year-old military officer Emeka Odumegu Ojuku at the helm. The Nigerian government declared war, and after 13 months of fighting, Biafra surrendered. surrendered. On 15 January 1970, the conflict officially ended. The government's policy of no victory, no vanquished may have led to a lack of official reflection. But many Nigerians of Igbo origin grew up on stories from people who lived through the war. Three of those who were involved in the secessionist campaign have been sharing their memories. We thought we were magicians, Christopher E.G.K. Ago, soldier. He had just finished grammar school and started training as a veterinary assistant at the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, UNN, in southeastern Nigeria, when the civil war began. Almost every student he knew became part of the war efforts. He joined the Biafran army and was assigned to the signal post, whose responsibilities included active intelligence and eavesdropping on the military on the Nigerian military. We thought we are magicians, said seventy six year old Mr Agu Ago. The Nigerians who were pursuing us were trained soldiers. We were not. We were drafted into the war, given two days training. Plus the fact that we were hungry. Some of us our skin was getting rotten. Nobody can fight a war like that. In January 1966, some senior Nigerian army officers, mostly of the Igbo ethnic group, assassinated key politicians during a coup in the West African states. Those killed included Amadou Belu, a revered leader in the south. This led to months of mass crisis against the Igbo living in the north. Tens of thousands were killed while about a million fled to what was then known as the Eastern Region. This event sparked the decision to succeed spearheaded, spearheaded by Ujuku, who was then the military governor of the Eastern Region. In the months preceding the war, Ujuku often visited UNN, the only university in southeastern Nigeria at the time, to meet with students and prepare them for cessation. Mr. Ago looked forward to those visits and joined the crowd who gathered at the university's Freedom Square. Once his helicopter touched down, everybody went there and practically school shut down. In the first year of the war, the Nigerian government captured the coastal city of Portacot and imposed a blockade which cut food supplies to Biafra. We have come to the end of the news. Thank you for listening once again. Enjoy the rest of your day.